Good ill. I hope you're safe and sound. Today's uh, my lecture will be uh, lecture number 21st. It is actually in continuation of the STS operation, what I had talked about in lecture number 20, where we had connected one VNCC with an Aframax and mark my words, when we did that, this was without the usage of the tux. This was whilst you're doing uh, an STS operation in a dynamic mode. In other words, as I said earlier, that it's like getting married between both the ships. Both the ships are getting married. Now today, as I, as I said earlier, it's in continuation of my previous lecture, we are going to talk about how do we proceed with the disconnection of these two vessels after the transshipment is completed. That is, after all the transshipment is completed, the hoses are disconnected and both the vessels are underway. And how do we proceed with the disconnection of these two ships? At that point of time, when I'm saying for talking about the disconnection of both the vessels, please do take a note of what I had initially explained in my first two, three lectures was the importance of the hydrodynamics as far as underwater volume of displacement is concerned. Therefore, we will go step by step in a manner so that first I'll go through the things what I've written, what I've jotted down and thereafter I will explain all the diagrammatic things like what is happening. So we begin with it right from now. Again, uh, my banner is hydrodynamic simplified and the topic is what we are discussing is ship handling under the banner of my logo Marine Quiz Solutions. Now, coming to this dynamic STS again without tug and now this operation is casting off these two vessels that is the vessel A and vessel B. The vessel A over here depicted is a VLCC and vessel B over here is an Aframax tanker. The, ship, the transshipment has completed, the holders are disconnected, which I said earlier. Now, we proceed step by step. Thereafter, I'll explain all these pictorial diagrams that what we are doing. Now, in case number one, in the diagram number one, that is uh, the VLCC and the Aframax, as it is being projected over here. Both the vessels are proceeding at speed of approximately 3 to 5 knots, maybe average 4 knots, holding their heads. Now at this point of time, the first thing what we do is to cast off the preventers. The preventers which were given initially, as from my previous lecture, I did not want to show the preventers over here, not to make the figures or the diagrams very claustrophobic. Therefore, what we do first is cast off the preventers which were connected from the mother vessel that is coming two lines on the bow and two lines on the stern. Also I said that these two preventers were, are normally connected with the load cell to, to basically gauge that the load on the preventers are not increasing because that's the first indication that something needs to be done. Therefore, starting right from the beginning, both vessels proceeding at the speed of 3 to 5 knots, forcing cast off the preventers from the daughter, daughter vessel because these preventers are given from the mother vessel to the daughter vessel. So we cast off the preventer from the daughter vessel. That is number one. In case number two, as we are proceeding, the second step what we do is cast off all the lines from the mother vessels. That means the head ropes, all the lines except the springs up. I correct myself. Uh, in case number two, we cast off all the lines except the springs arc, which is mentioned over here. So, what we do, we cast off all the headlines given from the daughter vessel to the mother vessel, the forward springs, the arc, the arc stern, the stern lines. Now, what we have to do this, this has to be done, you know, in a synchronized manner. In other words, the four and a half stations are standing by. First, we cast off the headlines at the bow. Then, we cast off the stern lines and the third sequence is to cast off the forward springs. We do not cast off the aft springs, the springs which are given from the daughter vessel to the mother vessel. Now, 
In case number two, as what we talked about, all the lines are cast off, including preventer, which we spoke earlier. And the only lines which are remaining in this case are the spring lines. So, when this happens, I'll just go through this, what is happening when we cast off all these lines and we are holding on to the spring, aft springs of the daughter vessel. See what is happening. Basically, we are trying to enlarge the V. The V which has been depicted over here, this V, is getting enlarged because we have cast off all the bow lines. So what is happening? As the V starts increasing, slack the aft springs. Now in case number two, as the V starts increasing, we slack on these two last two springs from the daughter vessel. And once we slacken this, now what is going to happen? The mother vessel is proceeding at a constant speed of 3 to 5 knots. The daughter vessel also at this, this point of time proceeding at equal speed, maintaining the speed. But what is happening, the bow is opening up and that's what we want, to separate both the vessels. At this point of time, as we have shown here in uh, figure number 2, we are slacking on the, slacking off the, the spring ropes. So what is happening, the separation is increasing even from stern gradually. But not to the extent till such time we talk about, we come to the step number 3. Now, before I go to step number 3, do bear in mind, again, coming to the underwater volume of displacement, what I said. If these two ships which I have depicted here in the inside diagram over here, if you go over here on this inside diagram, now it says during transshipment, the intersection of the underwater volume of displacement, which actually has created a magnet effect. If you see this red part which is highlighted between both the vessels, where I have shown that this is the magnet which is attracted or is uniting these two ships because what happens that when the loading discharging is taking place initially the VLCC had a lesser freeboard and highest higher displacement and Aframax had a lesser displacement but a higher freeboard now during the course of loading discharging that is not shipment what is happening VLCC is going higher and the Aframax is because she is getting loaded going down so somewhere down the line between these two ships there is an intersection of underwater volume of displacement. Now, this is what we have to break. I do know, I have, like I've, the, the way I have done, I am explaining this to you. I do know many of the mooring masters have already had a board with them. Few of them agreed, few of them have not agreed. But I will try to explain you, give you a logical conclusion out of it. Now, to break this magnet effect or the unification of the underwater volume of the displacement between both the ships, we can, what I had done earlier, I'll, sh I'll share with you what we can do. You look at it and see if you also find the logical conclusion because I found it, it was pretty safe enough to do, do that. Now, in case number three, as I said earlier, that okay, now the spring lines are again getting more and more slack and at this point of time, we are keeping the VLCC steady on her heading, maintaining her course and speed around 3 to 4 knots. Before it was 3 to 5 knots, now we are maintaining a speed of approximately 3 to 4 knots. At this point of time, when the spring lines are sl uh, slackened up from the daughter vessel, what we are doing? Just to hold the head of the mother vessel, where she is doing 3 to 4 knots, what we do? We stop the engine and give short stern kicks. At the same time, we give a helm to port maybe 5 degrees. That is to avoid the cant on a right hand screw, avoid the cant on the starboard side. Now, what is happening? Why I am doing this? As I have shown you here, I need to fill up this vacuum. What is happening? When I am giving stern thrust, the water is gushing off because this is a bigger ship, bigger underwater volume of displacement and bigger surface area. So what I'm doing, I'm using this hydrodynamics to carry out the separation a bit faster and a bit more effectively. So what is happening? Because I don't have tubs. So when this vessel, in this case, that is case number three or the diagram figure number three, when we're giving stern kick, the water is gushing in between these two ships. That is what I've shown here. It is gushing in between these two ships. but Take a note, be uh, diligent when I say so, to ensure that we give 
the spurts of short stern kick that is from stop to dead slow stern maybe 30 40 seconds then again stop then again from stop to dead slow stern and then again stop basically what we want to do or what we are trying to do we are trying to fill up this gap uh, fill up this gap between both the vessels to break the vacuum which had been created because of the un the the unification or the intersection of the underwater volume of displacement between two ships so what we do here we are keeping this vessel maybe five degree to port and midship as long as we keep her steady we give around once we stop the engine holding her head keeping the speed over ground of this vessel around three to four knots because what happens once you give say about dead slow stern the speed will not come immediately down it may come from 4 to 3.8 3.7 3.6 3.5 so we make a benchmark that will not go below 3.2 or 3.3 as long as we are holding the head or the course steady on the vlcc but in return what is happening this is filling up the gush the the the, uh, the what do you call the, the vacuum the underwater volume of displacement because of which the separation is becoming fast now you see what it is doing once the water starts filling in or coming receding or coming this way because when you give stern kick the water will come forward <clears throat> at the same time keeping those two parameters what i said keeping a head steady maybe little hem to port that is that can be decided you know at at sight i've given approximately say five degrees maybe five degrees and then make sure whatever you find as long as you can hold the head depending upon the weather conditions now when i'm filling up this this void <coughs> what is happening it is also giving a push to the stern of the aframax it is giving a push now at this point of time i have also altered around the course of this vessel the aframax around three to four degrees to starboard to make sure the clearance is always maintained whilst i'm working on the stern thrust on this vessel so the water is gushing in between these two ships it is giving a kind of a separation it's like you know the tug is pushing you out so the water when it is gushing it is giving a slight effect to the stern of the ship at the same time it is breaking the vacuum at this point of time as i said earlier i'll repeat this here that short stern kicks when i say, say short stern kicks we make a benchmark to maintain the speed of the vlcc let's say initially what i said in figure number two we're maintaining four knots now when we come to this maneuver we have stopped the engine and we give short stern kicks that is about 30 to 40 seconds and then back to uh, stop at this one of time what is happening on this vessel that we are we have altered the course about three or four degrees to starboard now the strings are strings are already getting slack plus because of the water which is gushing through between both the ships it's giving a push and we slacken more and nice and easy as practically feasible we cast off the spring lines from the 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 aframax spring lines from the mother vessel to keep and also keeping the propeller clear once that is done now see the phenomenon what is happening we are breaking this underwater volume of displacement the void short stern kicks to be given helm around five degrees to port on the ship is to so that to avoid the camp on starboard on the right hand through vlcc we are keeping a check on this at the same time we have cast off the spring from the aframax now and uh, we have given around three or four degrees off course that is to the starboard uh, three or four degrees uh, we have altered the course to starboard with respect to the original course <clears throat> and the water which is gushing in inside here that is between these two vessels ship side is giving a kind of a pushing effect to the aframax at this point of time we gradually start increasing the speed on the aframax whilst maintaining steady on the vlcc we keep doing this phenomenon till such time because remember here we are maintaining on a vlcc we are maintaining around three to three and a half knots or 3.2 or 3.3 knots this one water is gushing in we have slackened the spring ropes we have cast off the spring ropes once we cast off the spring rope we have given three or four degrees helm to starboard uh, with respect to the original course when she was steering earlier and we have started gradually increasing on the speed 
once this is this is happening while the EVHCC is still steady on a course till such time the vessel the approximately the stern of the ship comes approximately one third of the length of the bow of the VHCC that is the pivot point pivot axis we keep doing this maneuver as far as practically feasible once that is done let's say at this point of time when this ship has come approximately here we are almost clear we are almost clear we have broken the the barrier of the underwater volume of dis displacement and we gradually start increasing the speed on this and what is happening now the separation is becoming faster and effective because short stern kicks again maintaining speed around three to three and a half knots or 3.2 3.3 whatever is feasible as long as we can maintain the head and same time we are increasing the speed gradually now once that happens till such time the daughter vessel comes approximately one third of the length of this uh, VHCC, let's say approximately in pivot axis, we are almost all clear. One is because of the curvature, second thing is the, the underwater volume of the displacement. At this point of time, when the stern of the Aframax comes in line with approximate one third of the length of the VHCC, that means the effect of vacuum or suction is now getting negated. Once that is done, of course, we are all clear, we keep going and proceeding, we are already increasing the speed gradually once the ship comes, the, the stern of this one comes to one third of the length of the of the VLCC, as I am repeating just to make you understand, we can go all the way, increase the speed, gradually alter the course to starboard, once this vessel is clear, this can also alter her course to port and increase the speed as required. Now. One more thing, see what I said uh, in my previous lecture that when the, both the ships are united for STS, the thing which we do not want that, that is that during the STS or while they, whilst the STS or before, at the time of connection, we don't want this V to get prolonged, okay, because that will, if this happens the rope will part like a cracker, but conversely speaking in this case, if I have, if the weather is favorable, after I've taken 48 hours or 72 hours forecast, I find everything is okay. <clears throat> At the time of disconnection, when I find that, okay, weather is quite conducive, what I may do, subject to the feasibility of weather, let's say if the wind is somewhere coming from this direction, where I don't have to alter much, I may try in this phase altering the course in such a manner to head into the wind because this will give me an additional effect of the separation because when I'm disconnecting at this point of time I do I would require wind coming from the bow because once I'm casting off my ropes as it is the bows are separating but with the effect of wind it will be more helpful to me especially when I don't have a tongue nevertheless in case if we cannot do it if, and if we try this technique this has worked practically as what I have experienced so the only caution thing what I will say that when you are proceeding on this course uh, on a steady course on a VLCC you maintain speed to around three three and a half knots approximately to hold the head straight in uh, onto the course and stop the engine and give short stern thrust in other words, to fill up the water between these two ships, what it is doing, I'm repeating again, is to fill up this void which I have projected over here in this inside diagram. Same thing I have projected over here. Now what is happening, once we get the stern thrust, the water is filling up this gap and also creating a push on the stern of the aframat, keeping the stern away. At the same time, we have already altered the course to starboard 3 to 4 degrees it's giving a kind of a partial lateral thrust and that's what we were looking for one is we have ordered the course to 3 to 4 degrees to starboard second is we are giving the gush of the propeller wake on the stern mode when this ship is going on the stern thrust the water is filling up this so you can understand how the forces are acting one is i've given a starboard uh, 3 degrees same time this push is also there so there will be a lateral kind of separation now that's what we want 
that separation may not be too much but whatever little we can be we need it at this point of time and at the same time we are once the separation is increasing at this point we are gradually increasing the speed to get away from the hydrodynamics forces or the underwater volume of displacement which is creating a partial suction from this ship to this because this ship still may be having a bigger displacement even after discharging as compared to this one so to avoid the suction all these things what we are doing the only thing uh, i also would like to now repeat with respect to my first few lectures is that when we talk about the ship handling ship handling is a mantra of the fixed forces or the fixed things what we have on board that is our main engine our steerage our ship's maneuvering criteria her maneuverability and on small vessels the bow thrusters the second forces which are affect uh, type of forces which are affecting us are the external forces we can't do anything about the external forces but how can we harmonize and unite and optimize them in our favor to get the maximum out of it and that is the main mantra of ship handling i hope i have managed to explain you or put the point across to you in a very narrative manner and perhaps loud and clear however if you have any doubts or any question please do not hesitate to call me or send me the message on the whatsapp or any which way i'll be there to help you from here onwards i finish this lecture number 21 thank you very much for following me and do subscribe and like my youtube channel thank you very much good day i sign thank you